I bought this lathe off of eBay recently for about a third of the price it is new even though it's in as new condition and it came with a table and nearly a thousand pounds worth of um, of other bits and pieces so it was a stonking bargain. I bought it as a Sealy SM27 but it's also known as a Clark 430 I believe and also a Waco something or other. It's a Chinese lathe. I made a video about that lathe which you might be interested in. In, uh, in general it's a very nice lathe to work with. It's got some issues but then which lathe doesn't. Um, but it's a stonking lathe and um, I decided to make the experience of using it even nicer by fitting a digital readout or DRO. This one to be precise. I bought the head unit and two scales, one at 400, one at 200 millimeters, and I paid a little bit extra to get one micron accuracy rather than the usual five micron. And the whole package, all in, uh, which came from Australia, was about 208 pounds plus uh, 18 pounds um, import duty uh, VAT. So, um, really, pretty much a bargain. It's only when you actually come to try and fit the thing, offer it up to the lathe, uh, that you realise that you've got some um, some compromises that must be made. Firstly, you don't really want to put the DRO this way up because um, it makes it more vulnerable to uh, contamination with swarf and oil and other bits and pieces. If you put it on the tailstock side of the cross slide, then it's further away from the chuck and the cutting, so it's less vulnerable to contamination but it removes access to the gib strips and the grease nipples and the T-slots in the cross slide. However, if you put it on the chuck side of the cross slide, then it's, it's right in the, in the way of the uh, action, cutting action. It's ripe for uh, pollution with um, swarf and, um, and cutting oil. And um, it's easily bumped if you drop something. Well, I made a decision. I put it on the chuck side and resolved to um, protect it as well as I could in various ways. So the cross slide scale now protrudes out of the back of the lathe towards the, um, the, the, the wall of the workshop and narrowly misses the, the motor uh, when the cross slide gets close to the chuck. After drilling and tapping the holes necessary for the mounting brackets um, uh, horizontal alignment is uh, checked with a DTI and fixed with a shim. Something fishy about that. The verticality is checked in the same way with the DTI and is more easily fixed because the scale has got slotted holes so you just slacken them off and tap them one way or the other. The protective cover provided with the kit is not very good. Um, that flange at the top can't be used and will impede um, things on the cross slide. It also means you can't really close that gap which is right for swarf and oil to dribble down inside and also looking underneath um, the skirt as it were doesn't completely cover everything and there's ample opportunity for stuff to bounce and splash under there. So I folded up this thing from aluminium sheet um, and it does a bit better job. It fits flush with the top of the cross slide which enables me to tape it down making a good seal. It drops much lower for as far as its travel as it can do in order to clear everything and it tucks in under the device which I think will largely prevent the splashing. This gap you see here um, can't be filled with metal because it needs to clear the motor when the cross slide is over towards the back. You can see the motor there. So what I'm going to do is fit a flexible skirt there so that when the uh, hole is in a vulnerable position the skirt covers it and when uh, the piece needs to be over the motor the skirt gives way uh, but at that point it's not vulnerable to contamination. And as usual for me, where the engineering stops, the duct tape starts. Taped over the end, taped over the back, which is a really ugly shape. Um, this is a temporary, temporary arrangement, he said. <laughs> uh, and there it is again, that side. All of that has to be flexible, in all, otherwise it won't clear the motor. And here is that flexible skirt, which I mentioned, which will clear the motor when the cross slide is over that way. So I take the cross slide back to its furthest extent and then move it forward till it's just biting uh, to take out the backlash. 
and then zero the X and then knock it in say 150 somewhere around there put it back again and now put it back to remove the backlash and put it on zero hmm two hundredths of a millimeter so what can this mean well a couple of ideas firstly the reed head is um, tensioned against the glass um, the glass scale um, and I asked the seller if that was normal and he said it is but I haven't seen mention of it anywhere else so that might be a reason why it is losing steps um, another reason it might be losing steps is because the reed head is right near one end of the scale and the manual says not to, to not to have it go within 30 millimeters of the end um, there are hideous logistical reasons why I can't obey that rule um, so it's two hundredths of a millimeter out that's uh, 0.78 of a thousandth of an inch so it's probably good enough for the, for the engineering work that I do as you can see from the state of that uh, protective cover that I made um, so I'm going to live with this for a while um, I've checked it for over smaller ranges against the DTI in the areas where I'm likely to be machining and it is perfect it's um, to within the ability of the DTI to tell me otherwise it's spot on so I'm just going to live with it the Y axis is the longitudinal axis of the bed and is uh, much easier to do I drilled and tapped two holes and found out that this metal is only about six millimeters thick and that some of that thickness is actually a weird plaster Anyway, it was easy to fit some studs, put nuts to hold it firm against the bed of the lathe, nuts and washers behind the DRO, and washers and nuts in front of the DRO, and hold the thing uh, in the correct alignment in that way. Alignment was done in the same way as for the x-axis with the DTI, and was more easily accomplished because I've got threaded nuts and washers for the inny outy and slotted holes for the uppy downy. Attaching the reed head to the cross slide was just a question of dropping a 6 mil plate from the end of the saddle down to the reed head, um, uh, drilling and tapping some holes in the saddle to get that done. So I'm going to test the DRO firstly by taking a cut across the length of this piece. Sixteen point two three one. Then I'm going to tell the DRO what the measured width actually is. Now we'll take it down to sixteen. Well, let's take it down to fifteen and a half. Looking for fifteen and a half. <laughs> it's fifteen point five one one. 
So that's a hundredth of a millimetre out, which is about 0.4 of a thousandth of an inch, and which is pretty good. And of course, that's just the first pass. There's no spring cut there. Now, it's early days, um, but I'm very encouraged by that result. As I use the lathe with the uh, DRO, I'm increasingly concerned by the swarf and the prospect of contamination, which is going to ruin everything. So I started to do this. It's just a piece of paper, it's not even attached, but it does a fantastic job of redirecting swarf or chips away from the DRO. And then I thought, well, why don't I make a semi-permanent version of this, and why don't I put gutters on it so that it doesn't divert the swarf or chips, but collect them. Then I can remove it, put it, tap it in the bin. And since the cutting process, the tool and the work, are the only source of, or the principal source of contamination, if I got this sorted correctly, then I wouldn't need to worry about protecting the, the y-axis, the longitudinal axis of the DRO. And of course it would eliminate dusting, which is always a, a wonderful thing for a fellow to contemplate. So I'll be exploring that um, in, a, in an upcoming video. Maybe something in rubber or flexible plastic, something that you know can't be hurled across the room by a flying chuck. Um, I did check online to see if these things exist. Often if you think you've had a brilliant idea, um, it's been done and there are videos on it and channels devoted to it. Now there are homemade chip trays but as far as I've found, nothing along these lines. Anyway, more of that um, coming soon. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And if you feel inclined, give it a like, thumbs up. And there is a Patreon channel, guys. I've got no Patreons, but i got a channel. Just a thought.